Hi. So in the last couple of videos, we've talked about um, constituents, which are the parts of a sentence. And we started looking at syntactic rules. For example, the fact that a noun phrase can be a determiner and a noun. In this video, we're going to make some more syntactic rules. So then we can put all of them together in a syntactic tree. Because as incredible and weird as it sounds, sentences in human languages are not flat. They have hierarchical structure within them. And that hierarchical structure kind of looks like a tree. So in the last video, we looked at some uh, noun phrases in English, and we came up with this structure. A noun phrase is a determiner and a noun, or a noun, or a pronoun. These are all non-terminals. And then we have some non-terminals like that, pointing to terminals like the, a, uh, an, a non-terminal pronoun, an, an abstract pronoun, leading to terminal they, I, you, and so forth. We could keep on going. So we have noun phrases. We saw a little bit of verb phrases. We'll look more at them in a minute. How about prepositions? Here we have some phrases in English, above the town, above Hanover, to the city, to Boston, on September, on the 5th. So the one interesting thing about the structure is that it's a preposition plus a noun phrase. If you can see, sometimes uh, what follows the preposition is uh, a determiner, the, and then a noun, like the town, and sometimes it's just a noun, like Hanover. So you always have a preposition and a noun phrase. And then you have the structure of noun phrase that we studied before. By doing this, you don't have to redefine noun phrase for the specific thing that goes with the prepositions. You can just say that a prepositional phrase is a preposition plus this other thing you had defined before. So in English, you can have the rule that a prepositional phrase or a PP is a preposition plus a noun phrase. And that an abstract preposition is one of the terminals above, to, on, and so forth. And we can reuse the rule that we already had for noun phrases to put it inside of the prepositional phrases. So this is one way that we could describe prepositions in English. This is very important. I keep saying in English because um, rules are dependent on the language. Languages have different syntactic rules, obviously, because different languages have different orders for their words. In English, we have the preposition first and then the noun phrase. For example, to the city, to Boston. In Japanese, we have the mirror image of this. We have the noun first and the preposition second. For example, machie to the city. Machi means city, and e means torts. Uh, Boston e is Boston to, Boston torts. Uh, Kugatsu ni, September on. Itsuka ni, fifth on. So as you can see, these languages are mirror images of one another. In English, the rule for the prepositional phrase is of the preposition and the noun phrase, to Boston. In Japanese, the rule is uh, the mirror of English. Noun, pre uh, postposition. Kugatsu ni, Boston e, machi e. And of course, English is also the mirror image of Japanese. Uh, this happens in, in many languages. Sometimes you can have um, the pre preposition noun phrase, noun phrase preposition. You can have verb, direct object, direct object verb, for example. English, ha uh, in English, you eat pizza. In Japanese, you pizza eat. Pizza o taberu. So, the exact shape of the rules will depend on what language you're trying to parse with those rules. Let's go back to English, and let's say we have the rules here. We have a prepositional phrase, which has a preposition and a noun phrase. We have the abstract preposition, 
which the non-terminal, which leads to the terminal above, to, and on. And we have rules similar to the ones that we had. We had a noun phrase, which has the non-terminals, the terminer, noun, or, noun, or, pronoun. And we have the abstract determiner, non-terminal, which goes to the terminal, the. We have the abstract noun, non-terminal, which goes to the terminal, town, and over city, Boston, September 5th. So what uh, would you do if you wanted to draw the structure for above the city? I'm going to urge you to give it a try. Pause the video and try, try to use these rules to draw the tree diagram for the structure, for the prepositional phrase, above the city. And it means that the PP rule would lead to some other thing, and then those would lead to some other thing, and then a terminal. Give it a try. Pause the video. Let's check it out. The first thing you would need to do, because we know this is a prepositional phrase, is start with a prepositional phrase, as we have here. The second thing is that you need to, you need to know that this above is a preposition and that the city is a determiner and a noun. And the one thing that we have that's a determiner and a noun is a noun phrase, this one here. So we need to go from prepositional phrase to preposition noun phrase. Here, we will have the structures that will fit above the city. The next thing you would need to do would be to change this non-terminal preposition, uh, prep here, the P here, for one of our actual terminals, for example, above. So we have that a prepositional phrase is made up of a preposition, which in this case is above, and the noun phrase. What do we do next? We have the city. And this is a determiner and a noun. So a noun phrase can go to a determiner and a noun. Noun phrase, determiner, noun. Noun phrase, determiner, noun. The next thing we would need to do is to replace these non-terminals with the actual terminals that we need. Determiner goes to the, and the noun goes to city. Above the city. As you can see, a prepositional phrase is has a preposition above, a noun phrase, which has a determiner, the, and a noun, the city. Notice that this looks a little bit like a tree in that it has branches that keep on extending. And it uh, tells us that there's hierarchical structure to sentences. For example, um, when you have the word above, above what? The city. So this structure that is the sister to the word above uh, tells you what is the argument for this preposition, for this function, if you will. Above what? The sister. The city. Let's keep on going. We have noun phrases, prepositional phrases. Why not build a verb phrase? Uh, all of these are verb phrases. Fly. Prefer the morning. Leave Boston in the morning, leaving on Thursday. And you might think, wait, why? Those are not just verb phrases. They're verb phrases for some, plus something else. I'll try to convince you that we can fit all of this in a single verb phrase. What rules do we need? First of all, we could have that a verb phrase in English is described by, by a single verb, fly, by a verb and a noun phrase, prefer the morning, a verb, a noun phrase, and a prepositional phrase, leave Boston in the morning, or a verb and a prepositional phrase, leaving on Thursday. You might think that's really strange. Why would we fit that? The, the reason is that the verb and the direct object have a relationship between them that is similar to a preposition and a noun phrase. Remember how we said above what? Above the city. You go, uh, let's say to Boston. To what? Boston. We want the same kind of uh, structural configuration for verb phrases. Prefer 
what the morning leave what boston leaving when on thursday so that these sisters to the verb will tell you what are the important relationships to the verb so that's why we are subsuming the noun phrase and the prepositional phrase into a verbal phrase so that these objects noun phrase and prepositional phrase can be sisters to verb and that way we can answer really uh, questions like to prefer what the morning to leave what boston to be leaving when on thursday and so forth we have the same rules that we had before a prepositional phrase is a preposition and a noun phrase a noun phrase is a determiner or a noun and a noun or a noun and we have that an abstract preposition goes to the, the terminals in on the determiner non-terminal goes to the terminal the the verb non-terminal goes to the terminal fly prefer leave leaving <laughs> The, term, the non-terminal noun goes to the terminals morning Boston Thursday. So now I present you with a challenge. Please take out a piece of paper and try to draw the tree structures for these four verb phrases using the rules that we have here. So please pause the video and try to draw the syntactic tree for these four verb phrases. The first thing you would need to do is have a verb phrase as your origin note and then start drawing from there. Please pause the video. Oops. Watch. See. They would look something like this. In the case of fly, it's just a verbal phrase which goes to a verb which goes to the terminal fly fly <laughs> and like in you fly in the second one prefer the morning we have a verb phrase which is composed of a verb a noun phrase and the noun phrase has a determiner the and a noun morning prefer the prefer what the morning these are the trees for um leave boston in the morning a verbal phrase that has the verb leave leave what the noun phrase that goes to the noun that goes to the terminal boston leave when the prepositional phrase that goes to the preposition in to the noun phrase the morning so in when the morning leave what boston and if you're taking ling one at this moment, you must be incredibly confused and be like, why are we using ternary structures and not binary structures? I promise we'll get there. Um, leaving on Thursday is a verb phrase leaving. I'm sorry, it has a verb leaving and then a prepositional phrase with a preposition on Thursday. So we're leaving when on when Thursday. So as you can see, these uh, relationships at the same level of the rule, these relationships of two sister notes, uh, tell us that these two have information that's related. So Boston is related to leave. Um, Thursday is related to on and so forth. That's why we say that these have hierarchical structures because they organize themselves in ever larger and larger information units in constituents. By the way, one piece of evidence that verbs and noun phrases, um, sorry, that verbs and direct objects form a single constituent called a verb phrase is idioms, uh, phrases that have words but mean something different than their literal words. For example, to bite the bullet or cutting corners or getting a second wind. Uh, for example, getting a second wind does not mean that you got the second gust of wind. It means that you got some more life um to let the cat out of the bag means to reveal a secret it has nothing to do with actual literal cats so idioms are structures where you have words but the idiom itself does not mean what the literal words mean it has an additional supplementary meaning for example 
to give someone the cold shoulder does not mean that your colder was sh was cold. <laughs> and the piece of evidence that I want to present to you is that um, idioms are usually combinations of verbs and direct objects. There's practically no idioms anywhere in the world that are subject verb. Um, what we always find is verb and direct object, which is a, um, a piece of evidence that tells us that these two have a closer relationship between themselves and that they should be in the same constituent. Finally, we could come up with a terminal note, uh, I'm sorry, with a, with, you know, a macro note called sentence, which connects everything that we have done. For example, a sentence could be composed of the subject, an NP, and the verb and the direct object, VP, a verb phrase. And then the verb phrase could be any of the ones we proposed, a prepositional phrase, a noun phrase, and all of these. So with, with the technique that we have so far, you give it a try. Start with the note S, and then try to parse this sentence, and then this one, and then this one. Take a piece of paper and give it a try. Pause the video and I'll count to five. Welcome back. The tree for we fly would be a sentence which has a noun phrase as its subject, which is composed of a pronoun when we have the terminal we. It has a verbal phrase, which is composed of a verb with the terminal fly. So what is we doing? Fly. Who is doing fly? We. That's why these two are sister notes. So that would be the sent that would be the tree structure for the sentence we fly. And as you can see, its hierarchical relationships give us information about who is doing what. Um, a sentence. We start with a sentence here, and then get to the noun phrase. To a noun phrase for the subject, the students. The noun phrase has a determiner, the, and a noun, students. The sentence has a verbal phrase, prefer the morning, and that verbal phrase has the subcomponents, verb, which has the terminal prefer, and p, which is the direct object, which has the elements, determiner, the, noun morning. So what do you prefer? The morning. Who prefers the morning? The students. These, hierar these hierarchies in the tree give you information about which elements are related to which and what answers you can, uh, you can give using the information in the questions. I'm sorry, in the sentences. Finally, you leave Boston in the morning. You have a subject, a noun phrase, pr pronoun, you, what does you do? Leave Boston in the morning, which has the components leave, the noun phrase Boston, and when did they leave Boston? In, when, the morning. As a quick summary of what we've been doing, with the rules that we have before, we have a very small context-free grammar for English that should have an extra M. Um, with a few rules, as we have seen now, we can describe the syntax of many English sentences. And these rules form trees of sentence parsing. As we have seen, sentences aren't just flat string, uh, strings. They have a lot of internal structure in them. And that structure can tell us who did what when, for example. And we will take full advantage of these relationships. Rules are language dependent, so your trees might look different for different languages. So in Japanese and English, there might be mirror images of each other, but this is fine. In the next couple of videos, we will practice with context-free grammars.